Hi everyone, I'm Gilad and I'm a solution architect at Extreme IO. And today we're going to talk about the new quality of service feature in Extreme IO version 6.2. First, let's start with a quick overlook of our uh, VMware environment. We have a 4 ES6 cluster uh, with 4 VMs on it IO VM 1, 2, 3, and 4. And those all reside on extreme IO volumes, uh, volume 1, 2, 3, and 4 correspondingly, meaning that we have one VM per volume on extreme IO. We can see the overall performance of, uh, of those four VMs on those four volumes. They are all utilizing their storage resources as hard as they can. We have a total of about 130k IOPS and 2 gigabytes of bandwidth overall. We can also see all of those VMs in here running IO workloads against our extreme IO cluster. Now let's say one of those VMs has a low priority for me as a customer and I want to limit its storage utilization in order to allow other VMs on other volumes to utilize the storage array better. This could either be a non-production virtual machine or just a low priority application in my environment. For this, we created the new quality of service feature in Extreme IO and we will show you right now how it works. We will identify volume 4 and IO VM number 4 as the volume we want to limit. This will be this VM over here, so we will center it and keep track of its IO parameters. Now the first thing we want to do is to create a new quality of service policy. Let's see how it's done. We go to the QoS policies tab in the configuration section create a new QoS policy, let's call it volume 4 QoS policy. And now we have two limit types we can use. We have the fixed type, which allows us to set a maximum bandwidth value or maximum IO per second value. And this will be a fixed limit for the extreme IO entity we assign it for, no matter the size of it. On the other hand, we have the adaptive limit type, which allows us to set a maximum bandwidth or IO per second value per one gigabyte of size. This means that if we assign this QoS policy to a volume, let's say, and at some point we resize it to a bigger size, that volume will have a higher limit in terms of bandwidth or IO per second. For now, we'll just set the fixed type and create a 100 megabyte per second limit. We'll click apply, and we can see the new QoS policy created in our configuration. The next thing we want to do is assign the QoS policy to the volume we want to limit. So we select volume 4, we go to the QoS button, select assign policy, select the policy we want to assign, and for now we only assign it in the monitor only mode, which allows us to see how that QoS policy affects our volume. We we'll click apply, we can see the policy is now assigned, we can also see it in the QoS policy and QoS states columns. Here you go. And now we can take a look on how that QoS policy affects the volume, volume 4. We created new storage reports in our report section. It's called volume 4 bandwidth and volume 4 IOPS. It's easy to do. Anyone can create their own report with this new report button. Just give it a name, select the entity you want to monitor, and the properties you want to monitor, for example, latency, bandwidth, hour per second, etc., and create your new report. Let's take a look of the volume 4 bandwidth report. We'll run it. This report has four properties. Bandwidth, as in actual bandwidth, QoS exceeded bandwidth, QoS effective max bandwidth, and QoS effective burst bandwidth. We'll touch burst bandwidth at the end of this video. But for now, you can see the QoS policy we assigned in monitor-only mode. In the blue line, we can see the actual bandwidth that volume is now running. In the orange line, we can see the QoS effective max bandwidth, which is the limit that we set in the QoS policy, and is for now in a monitor-only mode. But once we set it to enable mode, the actual bandwidth will align with that limit, a 100 megabyte per second limit. And here we can see the QoS exceeded bandwidth parameter, 
which is an indicator of how much more bandwidth is this volume using higher than the limit of its QoS policy. This for now has no effect on the actual bandwidth of the volume and we only use monitor only ability to see how it affects the volume itself. So after we've previewed what's gonna happen, let's set the QoS policy in volume 4 to enable mode. We'll click the QoS button, click modify assigned policy, change the QoS state to enabled, and click apply. We can see the QoS state changed here to enabled, and let's see how it affects the volume. We'll go to the volume 4 bandwidth report we saw earlier, click run again, and we can already see how the actual bandwidth has dropped to 100 megabyte per second as the limit of the QoS effective max bandwidth, and the QoS exceeded bandwidth reset to zero since we are not allowing any extra bandwidth higher than the QoS limit. We can go to the performance dashboard and see how it affects the other volumes as well. We can see volume 4 and the fact that it is affected by a QoS policy. We'll check the bandwidth parameter and see that it is limited to 100 megabytes per second. And as an effect, the three other volumes have rose to higher bandwidth utilization and can now utilize the storage array better than before. We can see over here the slight drop in hour per second and bandwidth, which is where we enabled the QoS policy on volume 4. But we can clearly see how the other volumes have better storage utilization since we now limited volume 4. We can also go to IOVM number 4 itself and see how its megabyte per second value has dropped to 100 and a little bit less megabyte per second bandwidth, which is exactly the limit we set. Now we can set the same limit as a function of IO per second volume and the IO size. Let's change the QoS policy. We'll modify it. We'll delete the max bandwidth and calculate the limit using IO per second. Let's use our calculator for this. We want to create a 100 megabyte per second limit for IO size of 16 kilobyte blocks. So let's change our 100 megabytes to kilobytes and divide by 16. This means that we can reach a 100 megabyte per second limit using 6400 IOPS of 16 kilobyte blocks. So let's set that exactly. We'll choose IO size of 16 kilobytes and max IOPS of 6400. We'll see how the max bandwidth was calculated automatically to 100 megabyte per second. And we can click apply. The QoS policy has changed. This will have no change on the volume since we set the exact same limit, but we can see it in the Vol4 IOPS report. As we can see, we have 6.4K IOPS for our block size of 16K, just as we calculated. Now let's take a look on the adaptive limit type. We want to set a limit that is near to the 100 megabyte per second that we set for our 500 gigabyte volume, but that will also be adaptive in case that we want to resize this volume. So we'll go to the QoS policies, click the policy and modify it again. We'll select the adaptive limit type. We'll set the bandwidth on our own without IO per second calculations. And let's use our calculator again to reach a 100 megabyte per second limit for our 500 gigabyte volume. We again want to reach a 100 megabyte per second limit and we divide it by our 500 gigabyte volume, which means 0.2 megabyte per second per 1 gigabyte. We are forced to use a round number as the input for the max bandwidth value. So let's try and turn it into kilobytes. We reached about 205 kilobyte per second limit per 1 gigabyte, and that's exactly what we'll configure. 205 kilobyte per second per one gigabyte. Let's click apply. The QoS policy has been modified. We can check it in the report. We'll probably see a little rise in our bandwidth properties since we set it a bit higher than the 204.8 kilobyte per second. As we can see here, a little over 100 megabyte per second, but we effectively achieved the same goal that we wanted with our adaptive policy.
Now let's take a look at what happens when we resize the volume that is affected by the QoS policy. We'll select volume 4. We'll choose to resize it. Let's double it in size to 1000 gigabytes. Click apply. We can see the volume has changed in size. Let's take a look on our performance dashboard. And as we can see, volume 4 has now rose to 200 megabytes per second bandwidth, which is double of what it was allowed before. We can see that the other volume's bandwidth has dropped a little, since now volume 4 is utilizing more storage than it did before. We can also see the I.O. parameters on the VM itself, of about 200 megabytes per second. And on the full 4 bandwidth report, we can see the rise to 200 megabytes per second as allowed by our adaptive QoS policy. Now let's talk about the QoS burst percentage. When defining a QoS policy on extreme I.O., we can also allow limited entities to have momentary bursts of I.O.s above the maximum bandwidth allowed by the policy. This is done using the burst percentage input down here. What happens when we set a burst percentage is basically we are allowing an extreme I.O. entity that is limited by this QoS policy to earn so-and-so credits of bandwidth or I.O. per second and use it to exceed its QoS policy for brief moments. Let's see how it looks. We are setting a burst percentage of 400 and hit apply. We can see the burst percentage here at 400. Now let's tap the previous workload on IOVM number 4 and run a new one we prepared for this scenario, which is running 1 minute intervals of IO workloads that are lower and higher than the QoS limit alternatively. We started running the workload, now let's come back in 10 minutes and see how it uses the QoS policy burst percentage. Okay, we're back. The I.O. on VM number 4 is still running, and let's see how it affects the volume bandwidth report. Let's run it again. And you can see here what happens. Let's zoom in a bit. Here we go. Now the way it works is like this. We have one minute of load running that is under the QoS policy limit. At this point, the volume owns I.O. credits that it can later use for burst I.O.s above the QoS policy limit. And a minute later, we see the burst I.O.s in use, and the actual bandwidth has rose for a few seconds above the QoS limit. This is the point where the volume has used all of its I.O. credits, and the actual bandwidth is aligned again with the QoS limit. One minute later, we have another load running of under the QoS limit, at which point the volume owns credits again, and they are used in the burst here where the volume attempts higher bandwidth against the storage array. This alternative low and high workloads keeps running on VM number 4, and we can see how the burst appearing every other minute. This burst percentage parameter allows for little flexibility in our QoS policies in a way that even limited extreme IO entities can gain a little more performance. That's it, thank you for watching and I hope you put extreme IO quality of service to good use. See ya!